punchy, viscous, delicate, moist. Not words to describe me, but all could be descriptions of whiskey. But one of my favourite descriptions for whiskey is cheap. Now, cheap doesn't have to mean bad. Black bottle. And I certainly think this bottle is an exception. Thanks for joining me, whiskey people. I'm Jeff. This is whiskey. Let's crack on. Jeff Whisker. Firstly, the tash is back. I'm looking like a budget version of Ted Lasso. Hey, 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 one last thing. And I want everyone's eyes on me when I say this. Look at me. Or if the cast of Top Gun were replaced with thumbs. And also, I'm in the nook. Is that a euphemism? I am still trying to get all the framing right and all the lighting. We're certainly getting there and I'm slowly putting all my bottles together. We're on the way with only a couple of breakages. Now I know lots of whiskey tubers have covered this bargain and I'm sure they've done a much better job than I can, especially regarding the fact that due to this being distilled in a coffee still instead of a pot still, it has to be called single grain, not single malt, even though it technically is a single malt. That kind of covers it. However, this bottle's getting low, even though I can't see into the blimmin' thing. So why not jump onto it? Bundle! Yeah! So, first things first, let's talk experience. Now, like my channel, Lock Lomond has had a slight change to their look and they have gone with a much larger logo on the bottle. I feel like it's a case of when you're a designer doing a logo, everyone asks to see the logo bigger. That logo isn't big enough. But anyway, to this one, I'm going to start with why is it an opaque bottle? I don't want to get the surprise of it running out mid pour. It instantly will lose a point. I will say it is natural colour. It's non-chill filtered. The green colour is really nice with the gold embellishment. The fonts and type use are really great. And they've got a really cool and with borders either side, which stuff like that is a real great touch. The design of the bottle and their marketing and their website all is just fine. But for this, I'm going to struggle to get past the opaque bottle. All whiskey should be seen and all whiskey should be freed. Well, Ni Hao from China, Freed here from Freed's First Time Whiskey Reviews. And I just want to say a big thank you to you, Jeff, for thinking about me. I really do appreciate it, man. So here's to you, dude, Jeff Varker. Ed, oh, that doesn't sound right. Jeff Green Tea. Ha, ha, what fuck. Jeff Skippy. Chunky. But no, sincerely, Jeff, thank you for thinking of me, man. I really do appreciate it, and this is what you're looking for. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, man. Therefore, I think for the experience, it's going to be getting middle of the road, three out of six Jeffs. Either way, let's get this poured, and let's go on the nose. While stated as peated, the smoke is barely there. It's much more fruity, more spirity, quite like a young spirit note. Yeah, I'm not sure on what the age is. It's a non-age statement, but it's got that kind of new makey fruity banana smell. It's light, gentle. There's some flowery notes, um, diluted blackcurrant squash, maybe like overly diluted. And there's like a, like a citrusy bit of lemon. But I am finding that a lot lately. Have you seen my lemons? I want my lemons. There is this smidge of smoke, which is a little bit uh, Lafroig-like. Uh, it's kind of like medicinal, metallic. Funky, not maybe not funky, because that thinks of Campbelltown, but a certain tang to it. And life is a mustard burp. Momentarily tangy, then forgotten in the air. Overall, the nose ain't bad. There's interest there, and there's like a, quite a few things going on, but nothing's that exciting. It could be like a good entry sniff into peated whiskey, because there's that faint smoke to kind of get you used to it, but, but it's not really doing that much for me. Yeah, it's not bad, and it's gonna have to be an acceptable three out of six Jeffs. Anyway, no time to waste, let's get to the taste. Cheers. I've been back and forth this bottle so many times. Sometimes I love it, sometimes not so much. And on that first sip, it's a bit like when you leave whiskey in a metallic hip flask and you kind of forget about it and you come back to it like a couple months later and it's got that metally taste. I feel like my hands have gone more wild. I've still got a plaster on as well. Don't juggle scissors, kids. Kids shouldn't be watching this anyway. I'm getting that black currant again with like a good slice of tangy peat. Um, burnt apple, uh, like is 
Can you get like apple pie or apple and blackcurrant pie? Quite juicy, a little bit sour, uh, red funky grapes. It's almost a stinging note on the tongue. Metal needles covered in antibacterial gel and it's like just like stabbing slightly on the tongue. If acupuncture went really wrong. I am enjoying this tonight and as I mentioned earlier some days it's just not for me and other days I think it's one of the best whiskies going. But overall it's you know in between. The finish for me certainly lets it down. It really fades to black. Frozen yogurt. And it's just gone in seconds. It's certainly not bad and the fact that there's been times I've had this in the glass and I've not got on with it at all and other times like this is a bit of a flavour exploration. I have flipped back and forth from this more times than a pancake and for that I think it's gonna have to be middle of the road again. Three out of six Jeffs. It's quite an unexciting review really. Anyway to talk about the biggest selling point let's talk value. Now I will say it's not quite as cheap as it once was but no whiskey is these days. All right, keep your air on, granddad. Hey. I paid a crazy 19 pounds for this, and others last year managed to pick up for 17 pounds from supermarkets. From a quick skim online, you seem to be able to pick it up between 23 pounds, 28 pounds, which is a pretty good price tag. I honestly wouldn't be fussed on another bottle, yet I do feel it punches slightly above the cost, especially on days when it really hits well. It could just be, as I'm getting to the bottom of the bottle, too much air is getting in, it's kind of tainting it, but overall I would say my experience with this bottle has been pretty good. And for that price you can't complain, so for value score it's going to have to get 4 out of 6 Jeffs. Therefore the total of this bottle, I feel like my jazz hand's gone out of control in this room. Therefore the total of this bottle comes in an acceptable 13 out of 24 Jeffs. Again that may not seem loads, but if we use the silly 100 points system, where 17 means it's bad, this could easily be 80, which, you know, that seems like a really good score. Or if it was at a 10, it could be 6 out of 10, which again, it's above halfway and it seems much more impressive than my stupid scoring system. Interestingly, I found my old written review of the standard Loch Lomond 12. And for context, it came in at 17 out of 24. So it's slightly above this one and sits about a 10 or more. But that review was scribbled down maybe two years ago. I've got another bargain painted dram on the review queue, which is even cheaper than this one. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't, if you want to watch any more. Do let me know your thoughts on this bottle in the comments below. Thanks for watching and cheers to the next one. Ni hao from China. Freed here from Freed's First Time, and I just want to give a big shout out to you, Jeff. Thank you so much for thinking of me, man. I've been watching G Whiskey since the very beginning, dude, so congrats on all your success. And what? What do you mean? It's not not the G Whiskey, Jeff? It's the other, the, the, uh, the other Jeff? Oh. All right, well. Hey, man. Uh, thanks for thinking about me. Best of luck to you.